Yeah, 2009 Toyota Yaris. Gonna do rear drum brakes. And first thing you wanna do is uh, break your tires, lug nuts loose, jack it up and support it properly. Remove your tires and then remove your drums. If your drums are uh, frozen on there, you wanna spray it with some uh, penetrant and then hit on the outside of the drums. Hit on the outside of the drums with your sledgehammer. Not a big one, but like a three pounder, 36 ounce hammer. And you wanna hit it around. What it does is it vibrates the, the drum, it causes it to break its, the, the bead, you know, the, the rust around it. And then it comes off and then if it doesn't come straight off, it might be stuck on the rust ridge on the shoes. So then you have to hit it from side to side to get it finally to come off and get it off. And if you're going to uh, reuse these drums, you know, the drums ain't that much, they're 60 bucks each. But if you're gonna reuse them, remove this rust ridge right here with a die grinder with, some, with a sandpaper on it, you know? Because otherwise, you'll get them stuck again when you go to check them later on, so. But if you're not gonna reuse them and you're gonna get new ones, then don't worry about it, okay? What you wanna do is you wanna get your phone out and you wanna take a picture of it, okay? Just get a mental note of it, how everything looks. Right and left are exactly the same, except they are reversed, you know? This would be over here and this would be over there on the other side. It's just flipped, okay? No right way or wrong way to do this. If you find a better way to do it, that's fine, that's great. It's just a general idea how to do it. So get yourself a pair of nice side cuts wire snips, you know, and uh, get yourself your favorite pair of pliers. This is a side cut. This is a good pair of pliers. They're not big and fat. They're kind of skinny. Great. What you want to do is first, you want to take this spring on this side and release it, okay? And that, you can use your uh, side cuts. What I'll do is I'll get on there, put the side cuts on there, get a nice grip, and then I'll put pry against the hub, hold the shoe, pull the spring out, just like that, release it, okay? Now you wanna go down, you wanna remove this little spring on the bottom. Grab it. This one you might be able to cut it with the side cuts, but so you just wanna just grab it. Put your hand against the shoe, like that with your thumb, pry against your hand, and pull it off. It goes around a little lip on the bottom. See, it kind of disappears in there. Remove your spring. If you're gonna get the new spring kit, that's great. I didn't do it. I regret it. I just don't have the time to make it over to the parts store, but these are still decent enough that I can reuse them. If I cut my spring, if I cut this spring, I'm going to go ahead and buy a new kit. Okay, now you got your, your hold down springs and you want to remove them. That's when your nice pair of pliers comes in. And on the back side of the shoe is where the pin sticks through. You want to take your pliers, grab hold of the, the outer ring of the uh, hold down and you want to move it back and forth because you want to break it loose from the pin and the, and the retainer so they get built up with rust in there now you want to push it in and turn it so you find the other opening on it okay 
these kind of see, see how it is got an opening in it okay take your spring off pull your pin out put them aside in a tray Now you can take this whole assembly out. Okay, the whole assembly is out. You want to put that aside on your bench. Get to that in a little bit. Now you still got your parking brake lever that's still inside there. It's attached to that. And you got this hold down. So now you want to remove that hold down. Allergies are kicking in today. Remember, break it loose, get the rust off of it, push it in, turn it. Sometimes you'll lose it and it'll shoot across wherever, and you'll have to find it. Okay? Yeah. All right. Now that whole thing just comes on down. Okay? Now you see this clip, it's a smash clip, you squeeze it together with a pair of pliers, like a U. And what I'll do is, I try to open it up with my side cuts, I get inside that section that's open there, and here, and try to squeeze it in there. Kinda hard to do that film, but And then uh, just want to open it up just a little bit. Okay. Now you can see how it opened up. Okay. And you want to kind of like turn it around. Turn that clip. So it's facing the shoe. Okay. See how it's facing the shoe, the opening. Now give me a big screwdriver, like that. Now kind of like pry it from side to side. Yeah, it's getting loose in there. Get that set of cuts again. What I want to do is get that opening over here towards the side so I can get my side cuts on it and pull it off. Okay. Hold it off. All right. Now, it's full of dust, brick dust and crap. So what you wanna do is you wanna clean it off with some uh, brake clean that does not remove paint. So you wanna get the non-flammable stuff. Clean it up. Okay, so cleaned up. Best clean. Okay. And now you can use a wire brush. Clean it up a little bit. It's all rusty and flaking. And nasty. If you want to replace this backing plate, you'd have to take the hub bearing off. There's a 14 there, 14 there, a 
14 there and a 14 there and then you tap it and it comes off and then the backing plate will probably follow because it'll probably rust it. But make sure you be aware of the uh, ABS wire in the back for the sensor, for the wheel sensor. Okay. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that. So you just respray it. A little messy. Thank you so doing this in the garage. Make sure you turn your fan on. Let it air dry a little bit the best you can. You gotta blow a guy on. the hub kind of rusty nasty not too bad if you got a die grinder clean it up if you got one that's great now's the time to do it Scratching it, I'm not removing anything. Just trying to get the rust off of there. Freight and buy one of these die grinders, they're, they're awesome. And right, next, I'm going to do it on the side. Get in there. A new one works better because it's larger, so it's going bore out. I'm spend all day on it. I'm going to clean her up. It might use this on Amazon Rolex Dix. Dix. And you can also buy the one that goes around the stud. There's a hole in it. It cleans up around the stud. Now, for the spots you can't get there real close to it, and just hit them real, real, little bit. Again, Harbor Freight, get a bunch of them. Set up from what you need. It'll be perfect. Okay? That's good. Next, what I'll do, I don't like rusty stuff. I'm gonna spray it with some paint, get it out of there, let it soak into the metal, you know, because it's flaking. Looks better too. Uh, next time when you go and look at it for brake inspection, you'll be like, oh, yeah. It probably don't help, but <sighs> makes you feel good anyway. All right, now we need to do the uh, adjusters on the brake shoes. What you want to do is open up your brake shoe box, match up your shoes to your original ones okay there's a shoe here's a shoe they kind of look the same okay and you want to remove this brake spring 
It just pulls off. Pair of pliers, not a pair of pliers. Pull it off. Some dilated grease on there or some silk lad, a little bit of anti-seize, put it back in. Remember, one goes one direction, one goes the other direction, and the other side goes the other direction. Run it all the way in because you're going to adjust it when you get your shoes on. So, a little bit. And you see silk glide, dilated grease on there. I like dilated grease, silk glide, which is good. Okay, got that on there. Now you remember which end went in where? Probably not. Alright. Now, this is actually the back side. Of the shoe you don't see so but you do see the spring so you need to put the spring in there uh, get it in there put that in there let me show you something now you see it's a step it's stepped you gotta step on see the step That step that allows for this lever to sit inside there and, and hits it, okay? Same thing with the, the other side. The parking brake shoe, the uh, adjuster lever, not the adjuster, the parking brake lever goes on that side and then the brake shoe goes on the other side, okay? So both sides are stepped. Now you put this in there. You want the low step going onto your lever and then the big step going onto your shoe. Put this back in there. Like that. Okay, so now that's done. I'm gonna go put that back in there. And next we're gonna put the uh, Second day. Uh, let's see. This should be the second day. This should be the primary. We're gonna put the primary shoe back in. Okay. But don't forget, we got this spring. We gotta put that back on. So go down there. Down there like that. Pull it down. how it looks if you have any questions on anything when you're doing this go to the other side because you didn't take the other side apart yet do one side at a time so you can get a reference to it all okay because you don't see this when you're looking at it you only see this all right now on the shoe kit comes some of the new retainers for the parking brake lever okay so you make sure you find those comes in the spring kit too, which I didn't buy this. Forgot. 
But anyway, now we're gonna do the other shoe. We're gonna put that on the uh, parking brake lever. All right. If it's so glad, dial that grease or any C's on your parking brake lever. The pin. That way it gets a little bit of lube. Maybe good. Remember? Top and bottom. It goes in there like that. Stick it through. Get your new uh, clip. Your horseshoe. Horseshoe in there, put it in there. Should fall right in there, okay? So grab your good pair of pliers, you like your favorites. Get underneath it. Yeah, I can get to it. Alright. Alright. Okay. Push it down in there. Put your pliers on there. And squeeze it. Squeeze it together. It'll center itself in there and be good. And she just keep pushing it down in there. And you just don't want to go. Don't want to go. Once you got lost somewhere down the line. All right. These my side cuts. Squeeze them together. Even a little booger. All right. You get the idea. Hold on a second. Okay, I got squeezed together. I had to swear at it, so I had to. Get you up line there. Okay. Back and plate should be dry now because we sprayed it with some paint. I get some uh, Silaglide dilated grease. Put it on the, the mounts for the shoes that's right on it. I'm using uh, caliper lube that comes with the brake pads. I don't have any Silaglide. You can use any seeds on it, but the any seeds is just such a mess. Okay? It's all over everything. So put it down there, rub it on the mounting pads. It'll be good. Okay? And next, you want to put your shoe up there. Get it in there and put your uh, pin through here and your spring, okay? Okay, I got my pin in there. I'm ready to go. And you'll notice this pin goes through this hole on this side and on the other side, the pin will go through that hole. Okay. Opposite, and I always stick the pliers like that, go straight up and down with my pliers, so that way I know where everything's at. Take this hand, put it up in there, and hold it. Guide it in there where it's supposed to be. Turn your pin so it's facing the way you want it to be, up and down. You got a straight shot. Push it on there, turn it. Bam. Okay. Now we'll get our other shoe with the hardware on it for the adjuster and we'll put it in there. Okay, the big spot goes on the uh, parking brake lever, the little spot goes on the chute, okay? This is kind of tricky when you get it in there. First we're just going to stick it in there like this and then we're going to put a uh, pin and spring in there, okay? Get your pin and spring. 
put your pin in, find the hole in the back, put the pin in. And there it is. I don't know if you can see the pin over there on that side. And it goes through a different hole. Okay. But if you, you don't, know, you can always go to the other side and look at the other side, you know? All right, line her up, push your shoe up, get it back into the wheel cylinder. If you're gonna do the uh, wheel cylinders, you wanna do that before you put the shoes on. And on the back side, what you wanna do is take your line off first, but make sure you look at it when you're undoing the line that you're not twisting the, when you're taking the, the, the nut off for the brake line. Make sure you're not twisting the brake line with it. Make sure you lube it pretty good. If it's not coming with the, if it's not spinning on the brake line, then you'll have to heat the nut up a little bit with a propane torch and get it hot. And then uh, attempt it again. If it's spinning, the nut is spinning on the line and you're doing good. And then once you get the line undone, then you can take off the, uh, the, the bleeder, break the bleeder off or take it off. And then you can go in there and get your 10 millimeter and take out the the fastener that holds the wheel cylinder on. This has got one nut, one bolt on the back side. And then uh, take the bolt out, take your uh, wheel cylinder out, clean up around it, put your new one in, put some manatees on your bolt that holds the wheel cylinder on, put that in there. Remove your bleeder screw. And then get your, your uh, line with the, with the nut on it. Put some anesthes out, make sure it spins on the line. If it doesn't spin on the line, put some penetrant on it and work it and work it loose. And what I'll do is I'll get a little drill with a socket on it and I'll put it on there and I'll spin it. Spin the, the nut on the line. And when I'm spinning it with the, the electric drill, it kind of removes the rust around it. But then you get, the, you get the line in the back of the wheel cylinder, put some anesthes on it. Tighten it up, make sure it's tight, and uh, then you can uh, put your bleeder back in with some anesthes on it, tighten it up, loosen it back up, and let it gravity bleed, and uh, then when you don't see no more air bubbles, you can tighten up, snug up the bleeder screw. But before I do the wheel cylinder, I'll get some needle nose vice grips and I'll pinch off the rubber hose here. Or if you got the, the, the line pinchers, proper one, use those. I don't, but I got to uh, use, you don't know, vice grips, just to pinch them a little bit, just to slow the dripping down. And once you got it all on there, the line and your bleeder ready to bleed, then you can remove your vice grips. And when you get your shoes on there and everything adjusted, and then you work your brake pedal, then you can re-bleed your wheel cylinder, okay? Just a quick reference on that. Now, we need to make sure this adjuster is in the front shoe and it's lined up, ready to go in with the back shoe. Remember the fat part goes on the brake lever. Make sure the shoe is inside the wheel cylinder uh, little piston things with the slots in them. Then you get your, your needle nose, uh, I don't know, it's your uh, side cuts. And you want to pull that spring over to that hole. Okay? So, 
holding everything ready with my left hand. I got my new my pliers on there. I want to be able to use it as a leverage. I want to get in there. Get it regrip. Get that line in there. Get in there. Push it in there. Just like that. And then you can line your shoes up. Okay, make sure it's in there. Then you gotta center your shoe into your wheel cylinder. Use your big screwdriver for that. Try not to bend anything, because it's probably just real rusted metal. Just wanna get it up back up there. Get up there as best as you can. It's centered. Get your shoe inside the bottom. There's a little, it goes in there like that. There's a little slot there, it goes in there. Now you need to do this bottom spring. Get your needles or uh, side cuts for that. Remember that spring? Remember it goes behind the little pad down below. You can't see it. So, get it ready, hold on, uh, yeah, I always do them backwards the other direction. That is, I ain't going too good that way. Pliers are in the way. Hmm. in there okay it's in there goes behind it you're not gonna see it but it goes behind it right here and that's good then you want to make sure that everything's settled inside there looks good make sure there's no big gaps in there and all that You want to get your uh, dialect, not dialect, you want to get your fantasies and put it around on your hub. I like the film of it, so though, it's getting a lot of drum and rust to it. Okay? Okay, got the fine film of fantasies. Get your new drum. Make sure you clean it out with some soap and water. Your greaser. Okay, we need the fine oil that's on there from shipping. Put it on there. What you want to do is put it around like that because you're going to center your brake shoes. Okay? Then you need to take it off. Put it on the side. And then now you need to adjust your adjuster. Okay? Find the hole. Figure out which way it needs to go. Bring this one up. Okay. And I adjust it about an eighth. The same thing. Line up the studs. And wiggle it on there. Back and forth. Still pretty loose. At least time when I'm doing is centering the shoes, so. Okay. Check it out again. Gonna have it pretty easy. Feel pretty loose. Surprising it is that far, that far away. And remember the primary shoe 
has less pad material than, uh, I mean, the secondary shoe has less pad on it than the primary, okay? Get a little tighter, okay? Now I don't want to go too crazy. Okay. Feels a little tight. Feels a little loose that way though. Okay. Still loose. Alright. I don't want to be pushing it on there and I can't get it off. Push it on a little bit. Uh, I think that's good. That felt good. I still can move it though, you know? And I can't really pull it off. But I can turn it. That's what you want. If you did the uh, wheel cylinder, go inside there. When you got both sides done, you got both sides drums on, go inside there and push the pedal to the floor. Make sure you get whatever air is in there, get the fluid inside the wheel cylinder, and then uh, take your bleeder off and gravity bleed it. When you're gravity bleeding, you want the master cylinder cap off, so that allows it to have atmospheric pressure to help push it through. Okay? And always double check your, your uh, fluid level on your master cylinder, and make sure you put the master cylinder cap back on. When you get the vehicle back down on the ground, make sure you pump your brake pedal before you put it in drive or reverse. And when you put your wheel, re wheels on, you want to torque them to 90 foot-pounds. Like I always say, you want to double check the manufacturer's torque specs and your lug nuts. What you can do is you can paint your drums now, just to help prevent them from rusting, looking like crap. So, if I helped you anyway, Please subscribe. If you already subscribed to me, that's great. I really appreciate it. I try to do these videos to help everybody out. Helps me out. That somebody does subscribe, makes me want to do more videos, and it gives me something to do. I appreciate it. Thank you.